two keys. And we are live. What is up, guys? Praxeology Prodigy back with another Red Pill Lens movie review. Today we have. We have 50 Shades of Grey. Happy Valentine's Day, by the way, guys, before I forget, because I will forget. I was going to do this review last night, but I was having a lot of internet issues and my ping was all over the place so yeah i couldn't do it <clears throat> but right now it is perfect perfect time perfect weather as well dude the weather is fucking incredible right now blue skies sunshine okay let's jump right into it because this will be a this might be a long one guys so be ready it might be an hour it might be 50 to an hour so just giving you the heads up first point <clears throat> okay, so we start off with a quick day in the life montage of the two characters. We see the CEO boss life of Gray choosing a nice, uh, a nice tie, a nice suit, getting chauffeured around, and then we see the hen, the baddie like baddie main character, rating for this bitch. I'm gonna give her a solid five out of ten. Basically a midi hen, so midi hen 3.0 officially, but we'll call her Steel Hen and Grey Goose for the nicknames of the, <laughs> of the characters. <laughs> All right. Uh, ooh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, guys. My character, my character, my stream might be... Okay, cool. Just making sure. Because my stream said no connection right there for a second. Sorry about that, guys. All right, so <clears throat> so yeah, we have Steel Hen for the hen, the main character. And we have Grey Goose <clears throat> for the high-value blue pill cuck. All right, so we see Steel Hen pull up to this building. And right away, this place is packed to the brim with baddie like baddie secretaries bro this dude is a commodity high value man it, right away you can tell max trinity max everything you ever you ever walk into those dentist office and all of the workers are fucking baddies bro you're like where the fuck did this guy find these bitches bro yo i dude i've lost count of how many dentist office i've entered and every time well it's like a like a small dentist office and all of the bitches all of them are baddies bro baddies and there's always this one old hen that like runs the show it's like an old dried up raisin hen like old right dried up twinkie 60 year old hen that she actually does all the work while the hot secretary chicks are just there standing around looking hot you know what i mean <laughs> so <laughs> all right next point <clears throat> <clears throat> so she walks into his office and you can see her body language. And there's a lot of body language in this film. It, you can tell. They make it very purposeful. I'll, I'll touch on that later. But very high anxiety. You can feel the tension in the room. But Grey Goose, being a good player too, is casual, laid back, command presence, right? <clears throat> but right away we see her nerdiness and unpreparedness. It's irritating Grey Goose. And she's also asking lackluster questions, really questions without any substance to them, right? Very childlike questions. Of course, these heads are children brained. But for a college student in journalism, her friend is going to be sucking lots of cock, just like Miss Steel here in the very near future. But because the friend sent this steel hand to go interview gray goose because she was sick and her friend that sent steel hen is a journalist degree hen okay but yeah they'll be sucking lots of hairy blank <clears throat> 
Yeah, but back to the interview, Grey Goose shows he's very dominant right away, in control, and most importantly, out of everything, dark triad, okay? So, and he says, look, bitch, fuck the questions. You ask me what you want to know. So he's starting to spit some game very subtly, very you can call it overt, right? Because his his tone is hot, a directness is hot. Yeah, we'll just call it overt. Okay, fuck it. It is what it is. And what I really like about this scene is how the actors and the camera really catch on the subtle body language cues and facial expressions, all that stuff. A very well done for a high tension scene between the high value man and the hot college chick. Okay, so Grey Goose is uh, for the introduction, he's he's a bit stiff, a bit timid, but he's smooth in his own is in his own sense. Because you have to remember, like, okay, how is a billionaire CEO young guy gonna be? He's not gonna be a pushover and and flamboyant. He's gonna be pretty timid, pretty straight to the point, And he's in his office building. He's got work to do, so I'll, I'll give him a pass on that. But yeah, he brings up. <clears throat> relevant influences in english literature which is steel hen's fascination because steel hen mentioned something about oh she's a english lit major or some dumb shit like that hey, you, you guys know what these hens always major in some dumb shit fucking animal science english lit <laughs> some fucking zookeeper major degree whatever the fuck but yeah great amuse mastery from gray goose in this scene because you know Amuse Mastery, Command Presence, like I mentioned before. So he walks her to the elevator, and you can sense the spark between them. I can only imagine the heat in the hallway. The heat, bro. The heat in the hallway. <clears throat> but that saying, um, less is more, couldn't be more accurate as their farewell like to each other. It was just them saying each other's name. But you can feel the weight of their mutual lust in their delivery. That, that that mutual desire, genuine burning desire they have for each other. Like love at first type sh type shit, right? <clears throat> and then it even shows you as soon as Steel Hen stepped outside. I guarantee you, she flooded the streets with Twinkie juice. It wasn't the rain that flooded Seattle that day. That was squirt, my friend squirt <laughs> yeah what the fuck <laughs> okay next point <clears throat> i just want to point out one thing really quickly when she gets to her apartment you can see she's clearly thinking about her interaction with him she's infatuated with him she starts blabbering on about him and defending from defending him from her friend and or defending herself from her friend i i, I can't remember but even the friend caught on <clears throat> about their mutual, you know, oof, what just happened there. And tried to shit test her by calling him hot. And not only does she deflect, but I think subliminally this shows mate choice copying pre-selection uh, from the friend hen trying to make steel hen jealous, right? And she ended up biting her lips like, I want to fucking bad, right? <laughs> yeah so yeah she saw his pick on the laptop and that's when she bit her lips and she bites her lips a lot in this film it's they kind of overdo it they should have minimized it they overdid the lip biting <laughs> oh come on man i get it it was cool at first but then as yeah, like she kept doing it over and over she's like come on bro. are you gonna do anything else like <laughs> fuck bro start pussy popping like ice spice come on do <laughs> something for the camera bitch yo <sighs> Next point. Actually, before I go on to the next point, I just want to say that scene right there. There's a lot of intersexual dynamics you can break down, but dude, this this interview, this um, not interview, this review is gonna be really fucking long. So I really did try minimizing just the juiciest parts. So yeah, you're gonna see a lot of gloss over. Oh, what about this scene, Praxi? That scene was lit. Oh, Praxi, you only touch on this. I know, I know. There's so much to unpack in this film. But we'll just, I'll save that to the end. I'll save it to the end. All right. I'm interrupting the, the points here. All right. Next point. <clears throat> so we see our first glimpse of a regular motherfucker trying to hit up on Steel Hen. And he looks like a nice guy beta trying to qualify himself a little too much being nice to her by telling her about his bullshit art gallery that 
doesn't make any money, right? Net worth at best in Trinity aspect. But nah, fuck that shit. He's just he's just he just comes across as needy and desperate and scarcity mentality. So yeah, good on Steelhand for leaving that dork in the friend zone. We we see him later on. He's a blue pill. He's a blue pill. Watch out, guys. He's a fucking blue pill. Next point. Mm. So then we see Steelhand at work. She's working at some convenience store she sells like ropes and shit like those outdoorsy stores and gray goose pulls up by complete surprise to be honest this is kind of a weirdo move by him basically stalking the hen by finding out where she works and she's like yo come on bro to me this signals scarcity mentality but he plays it off like, oh i'm just in the area for business so he plays it off good okay I'll, I'll give him a pass on that then we see he asks her to help him pick some shit out <clears throat> and they're chit-chatting he's just asking some probing questions but dude this whole scene she was just high anxiety as fuck you gotta drop her anxiety and initiate play but like i said the billionaire dude i mean you can play father game that's high level i mean you know teach their own or teach their own for their game right i guess it works for a billionaire it only makes sense the the father game because he's a fucking high status man so um, does he need to play the covert, play with her, play with her dynamic, play with her and play with her dynamic? It'll help a lot. It'll make things move faster. But yeah, he, he's got it down, bro. He's got it down. It's, it's a billionaire. Only billionaires would know this type of game. <laughs> but anyway, he's spitting some game and he drops a good little escalating bomb, escalation bomb, whatever you want to call it. By talking about doing a DIY in the crib with no clothes on basically painting a picture in her head about him being naked good game tactic painting pictures then they go to the register to finalize this purchase and some random chad oh yo what's up steel hen some random chad a co-worker pulls up and he kills the vibe by putting his hands all over steel hen no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But yeah, he puts his hand on Steel Hand's shoulder, kind of surprising her by doing by doing this. Um, this does two things. Okay, it makes her look like a local Twinkie at the store, and also the way she reacts, it makes it look like that was completely unwarranted, leaving Grey Goose with a few options. But he says, "Fuck that." He doubles down and he wants to steal the deal ASAP. Okay, giving her his card to call him that same day for some bs excuse to help her friend get a photo shoot and she agrees okay next point <clears throat> so they get to the photo shoot and afterwards gray goose asks steel hen some more questions they're pretty overt and straightforward so no beating around the pussy bush with <laughs> with this guy what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, this guy just fucking straight to the point. No pussy bush beating around with Grey Goose. <clears throat> he asked the beta photographer. Uh, I mean, he doesn't ask the beta. He asks Steelhand, is the beta photographer your boyfriend? She says, nah, he's deep in the friend zone. And the chat at work is just Chad being Chad. So, yeah, get over it. So they get to Starbucks and get a $2 latte, low investment, low investment, high reward, high reward, good game, good game, good strategy. <clears throat> and then she admits she finds him intimidating and he kind of just goes with it. The whole time, they're just like, again, very timid, high anxiety. But when you're that high status, I'm pretty sure you don't give a flying fuck about game at that point, like I said earlier. So, he's probably like, my way or the highway. And in this case, she is choosing his way. Okay, good girl by Steel Hand. Good girl, good pet. <laughs> good pet. <laughs> but yeah, then he asks about her family. As soon as she says her dad died, Grey Goose gives the biggest smile in the world. And sigh of relief, knowing he has a lost hen to twinkify and make her his pet with zero pushback. Then she finally makes 
a fatal mistake by describing her mom by calling her a romantic and asks her and or he asks her are you also a romantic basically asking are you passed around and are you a used up twinkie thought pocket cum dumpster or not and she says yes i am an english major what other choice do i have i have no future so he gets disgusted by the sight of her and says the date is over and walks out <clears throat> And as they're saying their goodbyes, he does some kino and she complies, but he basically pulls back on her doing the subliminal covert rejection, right? Uh, push pull. It's not you, it's me bullshit. And she gets really butthurt and walks off. So he's basically, he basically does your typical direct dismiss, dismissive and push pull dynamic in this scene. Okay. So good game. Good game. Not too, not too pushy, not too pushy. So next point <clears throat> after this rejection the steel hand doesn't know how to handle it okay so the only way the only way a female knows how to handle this type of situation with no positive masculinity in her life is by self-destructive behavior and she does exactly that going out to a party getting used and ran through like like always right always they're always gonna choose oh, i'm just gonna get used and ran through because the guy that i thought was the one didn't want me but before she does get twinkified she gets a gift from gray goose right before she gets gets out the house she gets a copy of some book collection some dumb shit so now direct again right direct and pull again right so Pull, push, pull, direct, dismissive, whatever. Then we get to the bar where she's about to get twinkified. And then she drunk calls Grey Goose while she's on that. Um, while she's on that Grey Goose. <laughs> Yo. She calls Grey Goose while she's on that Grey Goose, bro. Come on, bro. <clears throat> and basically exposes the game, breaking the flow of what he's doing. Okay, and she gets him worried about her. So then as she's leaving, we see the weird, the weirdo, the beta bucks cuck friend zone guy, Jose Cuttlefish, loser, implying beta game by waiting until his crush, or employing, my bad, employing beta game while waiting until his crush is drunk blackout drunk to make a move on her what a weirdo and what a cuttlefish cuttlefish as rollo says or rollo uh, what did rollo say it was from he said it was either from gadsod or pinker this is why women hate betas so much guys okay this is why this is like the main reason they don't ever want to be around betas because of guys like this so gray goose arrives like Batman, I'm Batman, and saves the drunk hen from the cuttlefish beta motherfucker, because he uses his Batman technology, his billionaire tech, to track down her location and satellite imagery, and he hops in his Batmobile with his sidekick Robin, his brother, to go fuck his, go fuck her journalist friend so she can fuck off and not get cock blocked, or she, she can fuck off and not cock block Steel Hen and Grey Goose, okay? good game good game all right it all it all looks it all seems smooth but i guarantee you this motherfucker had a plan i guarantee you he had a plan to do this shit man if not a plan it's it's he's done this shit a million times bro you guys you guys don't get it bro this shit it looks smooth oh he's so smooth but nah man he he has a he has a script okay next point <clears throat> So we get to the next morning and Steel Hand wakes up and she's like, fuck, did this guy, hey, yo, this guy is too good for me. Okay, I don't deserve him. He's too, too high value. What the fuck did I do to get him to like me? You can see in her eyes. You can see in your eyes. They go lie. Blue dollar bills in the bills in the sky. But yeah, Grey Goose comes back and gives her the rundown. Right? He says, oh, this is what happened last night. And then we see him in a state of play. Finally, he gives her some toast to eat and he takes off his shirt 
and then <gasps> he gets a bite of her toast. Ooh, bite of her toast. What the fuck? <laughs> Yo, it's, uh, I, I guess that's game. Biting her toast while <laughs> looking her in the eye. What the fuck? Yo. And says, if you were mine, you wouldn't be able to walk anymore. Basically painting some more imagery in her head. Uh, this guy is good with the painting imagery part, man. Dark triad. Dark triads just do this. It's like they're a shit test. They paint imagery in there in other people's head. And then he gives her a, a little tease about what kind of guy he is. So then we see him in the in his office. And again, some more push-pull. But he tells the hen, bitch, you got to sign an NDA before I touch you. And <laughs> he said, you ever heard of... Of me too hashtag you horny bitch <laughs> yo nda is cold bro signing an nda making this bitch sign an nda that's cold but then 20 seconds later his scarcity mentality couldn't take it and they go to the elevator and the tension breaks finally and he says fuck it i'm harvey weinstein in this motherfucker bro in this bitch yo so he starts, they start making out, and it's only a $20 million lawsuit that I'm that I'm going to have to pay, so. And then he's like, I'm a billionaire, bitch. Fuck it, yeah. And again, yeah, they kiss so good, so passionate with genuine burning desire from both of them. So, it's ecstatically consensual, okay? Then they get back to her crib, and I do got to say one thing. When he's saying goodbye again to her, he says it's so cringe man. he says laters babes what the fuck dude dude bro i cringe so hard bro yo i'm just, dude just saying that just uh dude if only you guys can see my face bro uh, fucking chills on my it's fucking gross bro i'm gonna have to take off a point from the red bill score no, i'm kidding i'm kidding but yeah what the fuck man uh just Dude, never say that again. But he says it again. All right, next point. <clears throat> so then they go on a little helicopter ride. Woo, helicopter. So a little subtle DHV, nothing too crazy. Bro, this is too much, bro. How the fuck does this guy know how to drive a fucking helicopter? How, does, how do you know how to do everything? He flies a helicopter. He flies a fucking a drone later on in the film. Dude, this guy does everything, yo. What the fuck, yo? But, yeah. Um, yeah then he makes the makes her sign the NDA, and she, she signs it. And they go very overt and direct afterwards. She says, are you going to make love to me now? And he says, nah. I fuck hard right Yo, this guy's crazy man he he's over the game is crazy and she's like what the fuck you fuck hard <laughs> he does he's a i fuck hard <laughs> Yo, what the fuck okay but then he says i want to show you something and she says what do you want to show me he says i have a playroom and it She's like, you you have Xbox, what do you have? And this bitch can't wait to see his playroom. Her imagination goes crazy. Great imagination game and great teasing from this dude. Just, again, good game. Then he opens the door. And then she sees the dungeon. And she falls in love immediately. Immediately. She knows she's about to get treated like shit. Just how she deserves and likes it we <laughs> yeah i'm kidding no but yeah this bitch is crazy okay so <clears throat> then she then he shows her his dominant side which is pure alpha saying look bitch this is how i move this is what i like and this is what i like to do to bitches right either you're either with me or you're not and she tries to negotiate, but he says, take it or leave it. No negotiating in this, okay? So I'll try to keep it nice and concise from here on out again. Otherwise, this will be like five days. I'm, I'm just going too off script because, uh, yeah, I knew I was going to do this. How long are we in here? I'll just keep it nice and concise, man, because 
Yeah, 25 minutes. Dude, this is this. I'm fucked, man. It's going to be an hour, bro. I already know. Cause I'm not even. Oh, I think I'm a little bit past halfway. I think I am. Okay. But. All right. Um, Where did I leave off? So he puts his foot down about this whole deal. All right. And, bro, I kind of understand the chick. Like, this is all weird all sudden. So then she drops a bombshell. The biggest bombshell of all. Bro, she admits she's a virgin, bro. Yo, what? Bro, all these bitches cried when they watched the movie knowing that this shit is only possible if they're virgins. Bro, this guy, I knew something was up when he, when he first met her. His, his virgin detector went off. He's like, this bitch is a virgin. Ding, ding, ding. That's why he he ignored all his secretary hens. He went after this hen. This specific hen. Because, dude, that's, that's crazy. But yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm telling you, I know bitches cried when they watched this shit, bro. I know they cried. Yeah, because uh, without any contracts, without any NDAs, without any paperwork, right away, the guy said, fuck the paperwork again and turned in, turned her into a billion dollar Twinkie, making her an official thought pocket. Okay, bro, that's crazy, bro. He sealed the deal with a little game, all status and frame. I mean, it's rare as fuck, but yo, shout out him, bro. And, bro, they go rounds, bro. They go rounds. That scene is, yo, they go for it. So, so she caught him playing the piano, and he was playing this whatever song, and she asked for round two. She just went up to him and said, round two, you're not getting away from me. Dude, this bitch was in love with Dig, bro. She was in love with Dig, bro. Fucking hand, bro. Four hand. <laughs> Next point. All right, so, bro, this bitch has great girl game. I got to say that. Uh, Steel Hand, she immediately starts cooking and dancing and being a tradcon wife after losing her virginity to a billionaire. This bitch has, this bitch has girl game, bro. She has girl game. Shout out to her. Okay. Here they go blowing up my fucking. Do not disturb. Leave me alone. Yeah, she has girl game. Shout out to her. But, bro. So then they're about to go for round 10. <laughs> round 10, what the fuck? And he ties her up with a tie and everything. And we see Grey Goose plays when he's fucking. Yo. Not really when he's talking, but only when they're fucking. That's next level, right? And then they get to talking after being cock blocked by his own mom about like over it shit like he admits he admits his body count to the hen dude he admits his body count to the hen bro no bro you never do that. isn't that an iron rule you never disclose your body count i'm i'm not sure if it's an iron rule or if it's a chapter but i'm pretty sure it's an iron rule to not disclose your your past your sexual past but yeah now she starts she's starting to catch on and she understands she's just an object that she has her own little sex object room. It has a little lamp and a little chair, <laughs> a little cuck chair. And then she starts to play the game on her end using push pull on him. And bro, they place the weekend song in the worst possible scene. They play it in some scene where they're driving and shit. They're like driving in their R8 and he shows her his garage and some dumb shit but yeah uh, maybe maybe i could have broken this down maybe i'm being too concise but yeah it's not even that long what am i like 30 minutes all right i'm gonna ask you guys this whoever's watching this guys do you guys want me to just go full balls to the wall like 10 hours break down everything or do you want it somewhat nice and concise because i can do the 10 hour breakdowns but that I'm thinking, man, well, maybe these guys are just going to kind of be like, ah, this guy's going o OD with the red pill. I don't know. You guys tell me. But anyway, next point. <clears throat> we get a little more explication from Grey Goose. Apparently, bro was whipped for six years by a cougar. So it left him with some deep fucking trauma. So he starts opening up to Steelhand. 
And bro, I think this is his downfall, honestly. After he fucked, he no longer uses no game, any game at all. It's all over. He's being too straightforward, giving her everything. He's just blabbering on. Look, this is everything about me. Sh not using any more of her imagination, showing her a scarcity mentality and desperation. Like, <sighs> dude, Heads Roll talks about this dude. Like, dude, why are you doing this, man? This is why you can't move in with the bitch either, because then they'll know everything about you, and that spark is gone afterwards. Then we see we see them doing a little text game, nothing too crazy, just some play. Then again, she tried, um, she tried doing some more push pull, until she pushed him over the edge, and he basically broke into her crib and make her made her sign the contract because she was doing so much push pull during text game. So yeah, he broke into the crib, said sign the contract. We <clears throat> next point. Then we have the business meeting scene between them. <laughs> Bro, what a weird dude. What a weird dude. Dude, just thinking about the business scene, bro. That shit's gross, bro. Fisting? Dude, that's... Ugh, fuck, I don't even want to picture that shit in my head, bro. But yeah, um, yeah, that's wild, bro. That's fucking wild, bro. <laughs> Yo. But it's cool how they made the scene playful to hide the awkwardness so they use the hot and cold on the viewer okay cool now they're gaming us okay now they're playing the game on us the viewer <laughs> okay if you know you know right hot and cold hot topic cold delivery cold topic hot delivery you guys get the idea then gray goose offers to take her on a few dates every now and then and basically start selling her the dream again as long as she's on birth control we so now maybe she will sign the contract again this after after he takes her virginity it's basically a cat and, cat and mouse game about him trying to get her to sign the contract so he so she can be his submissive and he can be the dominant and the contract has a lot of fucking weird things in there which is why she hasn't signed it and it's just it's all tension and it's all basically from her per point of view well it's throughout the whole movie it's her point of view but now it's like should i sign the contract should i not sign the contract this is just how it is for the for the rest of the movie um there is some intersexual dynamics but again it's just them push pulling but yeah um next point then we see our first sign of commitment from Grey Goose, as he's now being publicly seen with Steel Hen. They take an IG photo and shit that she's not going to post. Then we see the game of the Dom and the Sub begin. Whenever she rolls her eyes, he gets mad. But two seconds later, he starts tricking on the bitch and buys her a brand new whip. Yo, what the fuck? But then he takes her back to the crib and he whips her. Bro, you can tell she, this bitch is enjoying this, bro. They're, I mean, they both are, right? Good for them. Good for those two little weirdos. Fucking enjoying whipping and shit. So, yeah, it's just some weird sub, sub and dom play. Um, I don't know what it's called. Um, oh, what's it called? Uh, dominatrix play between them and the guy is the dominatrix. So, yeah. Um, next point. Then we see, or then we get to the scene where they start doing the weirdo stuff. And, bro, this shit, I'm not going to lie, guys. This shit just looks satanic, bro. It looks satanic as fuck. If you ask me, if you ask me, it's just, it, it's just so weird. It, it, just gives, it just gives off weird vibes, bro. Like, call me a pussy all you want. You guys can say, oh, you you never whipped a bitch. You never tied her up to the ceiling and started whipping. Like, dude, no, bro. What the fuck? Dude. But, bro, this shit, it just, it doesn't look arousing or hot, man. It's just fucking weird and creepy, bro. Okay. Yeah, low-key kind of sus, too, if you ask me. Right, but, like, if you're into this, into that sus shit, bro, like, this this is just sus, bro. You're You're sus. I'm not gonna lie, you're sus if you're into this. But yeah, this scene is funny too. Like, uh, un like when I was watching, I was just laughing. Bro. I was like, "What the fuck is this, man?" It's like, "Yo." But then 
they're done. They're done fucking. And bro wasn't lying about when he said that she wouldn't be able to walk for a week. She actually wasn't going to be able to walk. So this this dude is literally... He lifts her and carries her to her little room. <laughs> so <laughs> she couldn't walk anymore. <laughs> That's crazy. Next point. Then we get a little explication after dinner with his parents. Steelhand is confused as to why he doesn't sleep in the same bed as her. This is a big deal. I don't know why, but well, I I guess I guess her being a sex object would kind of be a big deal. Like, dude, am I a sex object? Do you, do you like me or this and that? But like, it's probably fucking with her brain. So I kind of understand. And again, this this series is catered towards females, so you guys have to use your empathetic caps and kind of think like a female as to why these like little dumb reasonings behind the character's motives are being pushed so heavily throughout the film so you you go uh, like for the dudes out there just understand man this is this is for like females and shit so you kind of have to be empathetic with why it's so stupid why just about everything after the first half of the film is just dumb as fuck <clears throat> so yeah and she's also concerned like why she can't touch him back like he can touch her but she can't touch him back so it's a little weird. So, but then we find out again. He after he trauma dumps. It's actually some deep trauma from Grey Goose's childhood. His mom. His mom was a crack whore. Yeah, crack whore mother Grey Goose had. Next point. <clears throat> then we get to Georgia, where Grey Goose is acting stalkerish again, trying to woo Steelhand into signing the contract. Just basically love bombing her until she gives in and does what she's supposed to do. No biggie. Just some gaslighting and some manipulating. Just uh, just simple stuff. Yeah. Ween. <laughs> Kidding. All right. So, oh, shit. This wasn't that bad. All right. Yeah, because I, I kept shit nice and concise because I was just fucking writing on and blabbering on, on and on and on. But final point. Then we get some more explication about Grey Goose's background. You can't help but feel bad for both of them. The shit is so sick, right? Like their backgrounds. Like the chick can't really leave because he's a high value man, but she can. Like, I don't know, bro. Like this is all, all the shit's crazy, right? Then he takes her to his playroom one last time and he, dude, he whips her because she's like, tell me what's the worst punishment I'll get? And he says, come to the playroom. They go to the playroom. And he bends her over. He says, count with me. And she gets whipped six times, but hard, dude, with a fucking belt. Dude, that's weird, bro. And you can see... <sighs> dude, you can see, dude. Like, He takes her to, to his playroom. She's whipped. And it's sad, bro. It's, it's a sad scene. Like... Even I kind of got butthurt. I was like, dude, that's fucked up. Like, these two freaks, you can see the innocence, the, like, the innocence, like, leave her eyes, bro. You can tell she didn't want, she didn't want that in her life. I know they're, I know they're acting, but, dude, this bitch played a really good, like, loss of innocence in that scene. <laughs> dude, dude, you can just see in her eyes, like, dude, what the fuck? Then she loses it, bro. It's Jover. After that, it's Jover. Like, that bitch took a literal ass whooping bro literally she took an ass whooping bro like a champ yo bro yo and i feel for her bro because i'm gonna keep it a buck with you guys bro my mom used to beat me uh, like my siblings with wires bro <laughs> like fucking cable wires so and i took that shit like a champ bro i was like yo this fucking bitch left me mark bro and i have pasty white skin so you can see the marks like you would see them fucking yeah it's fucked but anyway <laughs> dude that's fuck bro sorry for my solipsism i just yeah you you can kind of feel for this bitch we all got an ass whooping growing up man come on i'm not the only one you guys know you know you guys know how that shit feels like bro all of you guys all right but the dumb little bitch goes straight back to her little room waiting for him to come gaslight her again which he does but he doesn't do it successfully right he does and he doesn't at the same time he does gaslight her but he doesn't so she finally realizes this whole situation is fuck and finally left. 
She thought everything was going to be a sweet, happily ever after. But what does Myron say all the time on the show, right? Extraordinary people come with extraordinary problems or something like that. Some, some shit like that. It's, it's to explain the High Valley man cheat often and some, some shit like that. But yeah, go watch Fresh and Fit. You guys will know what I'm talking about. So that was it. That was the final point. <clears throat> On to the movie score. Okay, this is going to come to a surprise as a surprise to you guys. But, well, maybe not really if you watch the movie. Red pill score. I'm going to give it a 2 out of 10 red pill score. Just because there really isn't much red pill in this movie when you think about it. The guy has high trinity and starts off with some decent game. But this all quickly dwindles down to a very blue pill soulmate soulmate myth movie about halfway through. And it's very lackluster with it, it doesn't have any real RP elements, right? Blue pill score, I'm gonna give it an eight out of ten, just because like I said, we got one itis, women holding the frame, high value male, with trauma and Crying over an average midi hen bitch, bro. Obsessed with the stupid contract and doesn't enjoy life, doesn't enjoy experiences. Some bad game sequences and zero burden of performance throughout the movie, right? Maybe a few times, sure, but you can see right away this guy will turn into an empty shell the moment he gets heartbroken. And willing to lose everything over a hen, bro. Over a hen, bro. Midi hen, bro. Not even a baddie like baddie hen, right? Not what, I, not what I was expecting from this movie because I heard a lot of reviews. But yeah, I guess you can say I'm a bit disappointed in the film, especially for all the inner sexual dynamics it had in it. I'm, I'm probably not going to review the other two. I'll, do, I'll probably do all of them eventually, but not in the near future. I'm, I got other shit planned out. This is the outro, by the way. I have... Uh, what movie do I have? I want to do deadpool next i have a few i have a few movies already lined up which are gonna come regardless um next movie i'm gonna finish off the matrix 4g on saturday oh also by the way yeah like, like i said at the beginning i was going to stream this review do this live yesterday guys like i said every tuesday and saturday but yesterday i was having really bad internet problems so i hope you guys understand that and also um yeah, today was like perfect day because it's fucking Valentine's Day. So I was like, fuck it, I'll just do it uh, tomorrow. <laughs> this is like lines up perfectly. Um, yeah, so I got the I got to hit the gym today doing legs. So it's pretty early. I'll hit it right now, right after. But yeah, Matrix uh, Res Resurrections on Saturday. And then after that, I have a I only have one. Uh, I have a few movies lined up. So yeah. So basically, I was thinking of doing Deadpool, the first one. Also, like, because the Deadpool 3 was announced. And if I remember correctly, Deadpool 1 was pretty blue pill, right? <clears throat> I'll do the two Deadpools, fuck it. And some other uh, cool movies. Um, as for, like, cartoon movies, I don't know if I should do them, bro. Because I, I kind of feel, <laughs> I kind of feel messed up. I'm like, oh, I don't feel messed up. I'm just like, do I really want to do, like, the like my childhood movies because i'm like dude that was like my childhood and it's kind of like when like like when i did the spirit the stallion movie i was like dude i'm kind of like going back and pissing all over my childhood like kind of ruining it you know what i mean not ruining it you guys know what i mean i'm just putting a red pill lens to it and it's kind of just it's not depressing it's just like damn like this shit's really fucked up it's like it's so blue pill and it's you can see all the conditioning happening i'll, I'll, I'll probably keep doing them but um yeah it's just me being a little but hurt fuck it whatever fuck you guys um also guys join um my twitter community and my red reddit community um click my link tree and my bio you can find it on any of my socials my x is in my youtube about page it, i have a link tree guys it's you you'll find them anywhere um also my instagram praxeology prodigy i have the link tree on there follow me on there i'm gonna be we're going to be going crazy very, very soon, guys. So just be on the lookout for that. And the Reddit community, I want to build a Red Pill community. But again, just focus on fiction. Nothing too crazy. So, yeah, I don't want to blabber on anymore. Um, fuck it. I'll, I'll do the other two. 
other two um, Fifty Shades of Grey movie. I just, I guys, I really hate watching fucking blue pill movies. I really do. It's just, I can't stand them, bro. Like, halfway through the films, I'm just like, I'm not even going to review it. I just turn it off, but then I'm like, fuck, I got to give you these guys content. So, but yeah, so I fucking force myself through it. But, uh, <laughs> okay, enough blabbering. 45 minutes. That's it. Thank you guys for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed it. That's it. We... Oui.